Welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or volunteer will present an object from the museum's permanent collection and pose questions for discussion. Please check back each day at 10 a.m. for a new work and a new conversation. Hi, I'm Susan, a docent at the museum, and today I'd like to present a bust of Nicholas Longworth by the sculptor Hiram Powers. I love this guy. He sits in the corner of Gallery 108, where he can keep an eye on all the comings and goings in the Cincinnati wing. His raised brow often makes me want to turn and check out what he's seeing. At other times, I can almost hear him say, what are you staring at? I'm not sure the classical manner, naked, in which he's depicted really sits well with him. Maybe it's the costly material that's giving him pause. It needn't be. He was one of, if not the wealthiest man in Cincinnati during his lifetime. But old habits die hard, and when Nicholas Longworth came to Cincinnati as a young man to study law, his circumstances were a bit different. He accepted land in lieu of cash for his services and bought even more. The Art Museum, Eden Park, and the Cincinnati Observatory all sit on what was once his land. He benefited greatly from the booming development in our fair city, so much so that he gave up law to focus on horticulture and art. He cultivated Catawba grapes for his wine business, filling our hillsides with vines. He popularized and published pamphlets on strawberries and raspberries and grew other rare plants in his gardens. Nick's active participation in the cultivation of plants differed from his activity with the arts. He didn't create art, but he did collect it, and many artists benefited from his largesse. Hiram Powers was one such artist, both a friend and advisor to Longworth. Powers was also drawn to Cincinnati for the economic opportunities of a growing manufacturing and transportation center. His skills as a whittler led him to the Western Museum, described as a random collection of curiosities, where he repaired and created wax figures. He was soon carving busts for leading citizens when he came to Longworth's attention. Longworth provided funds and letters of introduction for Powers, who traveled to Washington, D.C. There, he created busts of leading American figures. It was the bust of President Andrew Jackson that garnered the most praise for its naturalistic depiction. Leaving for Florence shortly thereafter to continue his studies and career, he would never return. The same year, 1837, he designed this bust, although it wasn't carved until 1850. He established an international reputation with another sculpture, the Greek slave, and maintained his contact with Longworth until the man's death in 1863. What admiration and gratitude he must have had to depict Longworth as one like the classical Greek gods. A man described in life as ugly and a shabby dresser, if someone were to sculpt you, would you choose a classical presentation or one more realistic like Andrew Jackson? Did Powers add the raised brow because he knew Longworth's preference? 